so data institution, an extraordinarily um, powerful idea and one that we're going to be exploring today in detail. If nothing else, the pandemic has demonstrated just how tackling global challenges requires access to data from across public, private and third sectors. To effectively collect, and share and use that data at global scale, it's going to be absolutely essential and it is playing a vital role in helping governments, businesses and communities right now respond to the pandemic. We can see this uh, in all sorts of activities and we'll be highlighting one or two of those examples as we go through. What are uh, data institutions? Well, we've got to have the right data, the right rules to govern uh, the use of that data, the right technologies to support the data and a diverse set of people, organizations and communities to be involved in working with it and setting up all aspects of that process from the technical to the, uh, uh, to the governance issues is the key thought behind a data institution. Organizations that create and maintain a data infrastructure are a crucial part of making data available. Now, although this is a new term, in some uh, real sense, uh, there are already many important data institutions that have been around for a long time. Uh, one of the uh, first was the uh, UK Biobank, um, and it's been around since 2006, doing quite extraordinary work, um, established to steward genetic data and samples to make them available under specific conditions for health research and development. The data is available as an open access resource to all of those undertaking health related research for the public good. Half a million people were recruited to actually make available their data, to donate samples and data to the UK Biobank for analysis. And it provided a very extraordinary resource to further our understanding of a whole range of diseases from cancer to dementia and improve the nation's health outcomes. It's not just uh, long established institutions, we're now beginning to see the conditions under which we will need to steward more and more data for particular purposes. So for example, in the maritime sector, an organization called Hilo recently emerged to bring together data from around three and a half thousand uh, ships globally to carry out really important risk and safety analysis on their behalf, bringing this data together. Many of you may be familiar with Open Corporates that maintains one of the biggest, largest open databases of corporate information globally. Or we can look at Open Apparel uh, Registry, which does the same for data about clothing and factories. 360 Giving is data about the grants given by philanthropic funders. Anyone can access and use and share this data, which increases both transparency and the potential for innovation. So we have many examples emerging of data institutions, and we can see that if we're to unlock the true social and economic environmental potential of data, we're going to need more data institutions. We can begin to see, I think, how that might look with the uh, emerging additional data from the pandemic. Just a few examples on this slide illustrates just, for example, um, the use of aggregated telephony data. Companies like Telefonica have been making their data available so that we can look at how people connect and move. That aggregated um, data which has been anonymized has provided really powerful insights to work out the effects of particular non-pharmaceutical interventions such as forms of restriction and curfew or, or lockdown. What does that even? Also that data will help us as we come out of the pandemic to understand how we can better connect. So mobile data will play a crucial role. Almost presciently in 2018-19, the BBC ran one of the largest citizen science projects um, the uh, country had seen to collect data about how we interact with one another. This data actually has proved to be invaluable as we've sought to understand how our epidemiological models can better reflect the actual contacts that people have uh, in and around the UK. So data collected well over a year before the pandemic actually launched has now been used 
to actually inform our scientific understanding. Now, in situations like this, we're aware that we want that data to be harnessed and used to the widest possible benefit. It's already making its way out into scientific papers. And of course, that brings us to the whole question of how we actually constitute and manage the data institutions that we will need. I think we're going to see today in the discussions and the panelists and the presentations a whole range of maturity of these models and the challenges that they present to us. What I would say is that the ODI, we see this as a crucial part of our mission. We've started to work with other organizations to develop the next generation of data institutions. An example would be the Insight Health Data Research Hub it's one of seven supported by the Health Data Research UK, and that's using the public, patients and other stakeholders to decide how health data in the area of eye disease can be used and shared. We're also exploring a, in a new partnership with Microsoft, uh, a commitment to create 20 new data collaborations and institutions by 2022. So this really does reflect, I think, a profound level of interest in the idea of developing our understanding of the different species of data institutions that we need. We don't believe there is a model that fits every situation. The data, how it's collected, how we want to license it out, the goods and purposes to which it's put will vary from domain to domain. And that is why, uh, with uh, over a thousand people signed up for this event today, we believe there's both enormous interest in getting this right and the conditions for making real progress. This month, actually, the UK data government published its national data strategy for consultation. That strategy outlines the government's intention to support the UK by increasing the availability of data and the skills and knowledge to use it responsibly. It's pledged to address the barriers to data sharing, to better understand the world around us. Well, that requires all of us to invest thought and input to the strategy. We at the ODR will be emphasising the importance of an open and trustworthy data infrastructure and the role of data institutions in making that happen. So we are completely committed to the idea of essentially developing new institutions, new conventions, new organizations that will carry the agenda for effective and responsible data sharing forward. I do wish uh, everybody involved in today's sessions the very best, and I'm looking forward to tracking the outputs of the discussions and deliberations we have a huge amount of work to do at this point, and we don't underestimate the will and intent it will take. If anything, over the years that I've been involved in trying to free up and make data available in the most effective ways, we understand that so many of the challenges are not simply technical, they are organizational. They are about effective governance. They are about the right standards. They are about the right beliefs and values behind the institutions we uh, set up as well. So that's crucial, I think, in all of what we do. The ODI will be working tirelessly with a great team to try and realize particular examples, particularly the use cases. And I think we've got a great deal to look forward to, but a great deal of work to do. As I say, these institutions do not come in a particular standard format. We will have to work to understand just what the actual uh, variation and types of these systems are. So thank you very much and I wish everyone the very best in today's panels and sessions. Thank you.